Hello, Ken Eagle here with Atlona, and today I'm happy to say we are unboxing the Atlona ATSW 510W. This is the wireless BYOD presentation switcher from Atlona featuring USB-C inputs and wireless connectivity for Apple and Android devices. Let's open up the box and have a look inside. Right. Inside the box here, we have, foam off here, we have the main unit and a second box inside here with a power connector, power cables, power connecting block, and a wireless antenna as well. We'll take a look at those here in just a moment. Right on. The unit itself, we see here this is a uh, 1U tall um, switcher. It is a half rack with wide. Note that this does not ship with ears, rack ears. However, there are rack ears available that you can get for Lona from this. You can even get rack ears to connect two of these units together so you have one full uh, rack with um, design that you can fill up. All right, on the front of this guy here, you've got couple of things to note. Uh, we've got a list here of the connection types. So show it will show you the status of what's connected, what source is being uh, active at the moment. And on the left side here, on my left, you've got a series of buttons, input buttons, uh, up and down, toggle buttons, as well as a display toggle button there. Flip this around to the back and we see several uh, additional ports here. Uh, over here on uh, my left here, the orange connector, that is power. Just above that, you have RS-232 connection, you have a I.O. Uh, trigger, you have a relay connection as well. These are the green Phoenix connectors here. Uh, this here black RJ45, that's a LAN port. That puts this guy on the network. It's an IP address, standard IP architecture. You can control this over the network. You can uh, browse to it over the network. You can use it with the AMS software from Atlona to be controlled and managed over the network. Beside that, this blue port here is an HD base T connection. Don't get that confused with the uh, Ethernet port here. All right, for inputs, you've got uh, four physical input connections on the back. Number one is USB-C. Uh, number two, display port, and then three and four are both HDMI inputs. For the outputs, you have an HDMI output, and beside that, an HD base T output as well. This device can be used with a single display or two displays, which can be set up in mirrored mode, meaning uh, they both show the exact same source, or they can be entered into matrix mode, meaning they can each show different sources, two different sources at the same time. A very cool feature with that. Uh, over here on the far side here, you have an audio input uh, as well as an audio output. All right, and here in the top center on the back of the box, you've got three USB ports. Uh, the first port here is labeled Wi-Fi and that's used for Wi-Fi and a uh, Apple AirPlay connections. Uh, the far port here is used for Miracast streaming connections and the port in the center is an uh, auxiliary port for uh, USB connections. Now, the antenna with my device here is one of the actual older style antennas here. USB connection with the fin on the back. If you have this, that's fine. Uh, just keep in mind the newer ones are smaller, like the bottom piece right here, just a USB connection. That's so they'll fit nice and easy into an AV space without this uh, large antenna on the back. All right, let me go ahead and get this set up on the bench here. Let's connect this and see how easy it is to get the 510W turned on and up and running. All right, so in the back of the box here, let's go ahead and make our connections. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and plug in my Wi-Fi antenna to the first USB port. I'm also going to connect a HDMI cable for my source uh, to my laptop, coming from my laptop. And I'm going to plug in an HDMI cable for the output to my display here. And I'm also going to go ahead and plug in my Ethernet cord so that we can get this up on the network. Take a look at the web GUI interface for this product as well and see how to do some basic configuration. And finally, I'm going to plug in my power down here in the lower left. And that will get us up and running. This will take a few moments to boot. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that splash screen and see what comes up. All right, once you power on the SW510W, It'll eventually boot up to this splash screen right here, and this is what will display on the screen when your guests walk into a room. You can customize this with a welcome message at the top, uh, and you get some quick instructions here that tell you if you're connecting via a wired connection, here's what you do, or if you're connecting wirelessly, here's how you get connected to the box so you can begin presenting. 
This can all be customized with inside the web GUI of the 510W. So let's go ahead and set up the 510W on the network now and let's switch over and take a look at that web GUI interface, see how to customize this and what, what other controls are available. I'm now connected to my router with the 510W. The 510W ships with DHCP enabled right out of the box and my router has DHCP turned on. So I found out that my uh, IP address that's been assigned to the 510W is 10.0.0.31, which I have put into the browser bar right up here. Two ways you can easily obtain your IP address include one, running a software utility such as IP scanner, or two, inserting a thumb drive into the auxiliary USB port on the 510W. Wait 10 seconds, the 510W will place two files onto your USB drive. Take your USB drive to your computer and read those files. They will contain the IP address. I'm going to go ahead and log in using the default login, which is admin and at Lona with a capital A. And that immediately connects me into the 510W with a little note telling me I should update the password. To get networking set up, let's go down to administration and click on networking. Click on the Ethernet tab and you'll find your IP address information for the 510W. You can set the mode here. It's set to DHCP like I mentioned right out of the box. Uh, here's the IP address that's been assigned and here's my network, uh, network mask and the gateway. You also have the option to put the 510W into static mode. From the uh, mode menu, select static and then you'll be given the option to set your own IP address, network mask, gateway, and DNS numbers. Click Save and you're all set. And then in Wi-Fi you find the connection mode. Uh, because I'm connecting to a router, I'm going to use the term connected. I'm going to use that mode, the connect mode, to connect to a router. I could also disable wireless or I could use the access point mode if I wanted to turn on Wi-Fi on this box and connect to this box as an access point. Uh, pick the SSID and the password for the network, save that, and that's it, you're connected to the Wi-Fi network. Now if you choose to use access point mode, you'll select that from the mode drop-down menu. And once in access point mode, you'll be given the option to choose your firewall mode. This feature allows control of incoming and outgoing network traffic. Block private network. Select this option to prevent unauthorized clients from accessing the 510W. Block Internet allows wireless access to the 510W but prevents internet access and Block All blocks all network traffic. All right, here's that splash screen we were just looking at. And on the splash screen menu, my first item is the Show Menu Data checkbox. When this is checked, your screen will display the name, model, date, and IP information of your 510W in the lower right hand corner of the display. And from right here, I can select this check mark to shoot, choose to show the panel or not. And I have some settings here, a title, a subtitle, and then you can also change the directions that are given on the splash screen as well. Remember, we had directions for how to connect if you're using a wired connection, and we had directions for how to connect if you're using a wireless connection. And you can go ahead and edit those and hit the Save button here. You also have the ability to upload an image to the background to change that default background if you want. You simply select an image from your desktop or wherever it is on your computer and you upload that and you're set. If you don't like it and you want to go back to the original, simply click on the reset button right here and that will take you back to the default splash screen. Let's look now at the matrix switching feature of the 510. You can get to the matrix switching by clicking on the routing tab on the left hand menu. This will bring up the screen you see here and notice you have this section called matrix switching. You have a couple of options to choose from here. The first is the uh, matrix mode, and from the drop down list, you can see there are three modes. The first is disabled. The second is matrix mode, meaning you can send any source to either of the outputs. Um, and then matrix mode with a static route, which is where you have uh, one output that will be switched between whichever source you like and the other output, which would be a fixed output for example, in a video conferencing application or other dual display application. And just below the matrix switch mode, here's where you will select which output will be the static output, the HDMI or the HDBase-T. And then just below that, you can now specify which source will go to that static output. Underneath the administration tab, under advanced, we find some more settings. Here you can turn on or off your on-screen display, 
choose to show it or hide it right here by clicking on these buttons. Also with the BYOD, you can set a few parameters here. You can set the max time allowed to be connected to BYOD. You can kick a user off by clicking on the button right here. Uh, you have the edit for your mirror cache right here. Uh, notice that AirPlay is enabled, Google Cast is enabled, and mirror cast is enabled. I could also enable Bluetooth for AirPlay, or I could enable a pin code for AirPlay users as well. Now if you enable AirPlay for Bluetooth, note that you will need to use an optional USB adapter placed in the auxiliary port of the 510W. This will allow the device to be discovered by an AirPlay source. Also, if you choose to use the pin for AirPlay, an air, a special access pin code will be generated and dynamically changed every five minutes. Let's take a look at the moderator feature. This can be found under the administration tab on the left, then click on moderator. This brings up the moderator panel. Moderator mode was designed so that a presenter or an instructor could see who was trying to connect to the 510W via the wireless connection and choose to allow them or kick them off so they were no longer connected. I'm going to go ahead and connect uh, from my iPhone right now so we can see what this looks like. Now you see my phone, uh, Ken Eagle's iPhone. This has requested to connect to the 510W. So as the moderator, I can now click on the allow button to allow this device to connect. And once I do that, uh, this is now on the system and on my display, my phone is being presented. And as the moderator, if I want this person off, I can click on the kick button here and this will disconnect this device from my 510W. All right, that's the SW510W wireless and BYOD presentation switcher from Atlona. To learn more about this product, you can visit us online at atlona.com.